Howdy, y'all. This is a birdhouse that has been in my garden for many years, and every year we get new families to this birdhouse, and it's really remarkable. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the 1878 World's Fair, and in particular, we're going to focus on not exactly the Antiquitech or ancient architecture, we're gonna focus more on the statues that appeared at this exhibition. And then we're gonna focus on some musical instruments that also popped up at this exhibition. But really, when we look at these world's fairs, one thing that we do notice is often these fairs, they seem to have buildings that are very remarkable and very miraculous and seem to exceed the limit uh, of time and space that were given for this construction yet these buildings somehow are constructed and it's just really interesting usually the narrative says that they're torn down right after these exhibitions but when we look at the 1878 world's fair in paris france we'll see that a lot of statues were constructed and it says they were all constructed for this world's fair and many of them stand today now on display at this world's fair was the head of the statue of liberty and as i mentioned previously all of the following statues at least according to the narrative that were given were created right at this time period in the 1870s none of these are predating that time period and you'll notice how detailed and finely constructed that these statues are and I just wanted to point out the narrative that many people back in this time period did believe that there was some sort of alchemy or other alchemical process that you could use to actually turn different things into stone. And I just want to point out that the argument can be made that statues like this were part of the reason why some people who maybe didn't know a lot about the process could believe these were possibly petrified real beings because they're so finely detailed and they look so realistic but honestly this is just some of the great craftsmanship that we see coming out of the 1800s so whether you believe the narrative or not that is presented at these world's fairs you do have to admit that these statues are very remarkable and i just wanted to share them with you and hear your ideas about them down below now one of the other things that I noticed a big part of this 1878 exhibition was, uh, was the distribution and the basically presentation of different musical instruments. We have all these different nations that are represented within these statues. And then we also have these different nations that are bringing forth their most unique and basically challenging instruments. And while we have one called a calliope that is basically a steam organ that is mobile, I want to look at one of its competitors, and that is the fire organ. And this bad boy basically makes sound and light through these tubes, uh, basically in the style of an organ, but it uses fire to basically create sound within these tubes. This device, the fire organ, was better known as the pyrophone, and its notes were sounded by miniature explosions. It was a rapid combustion and heating process, basically. There were burners inside of these cylindrical tubes, and they would have these little filaments, and these filaments would each have their own flame within them. And when these filaments were brought closer or further away from one another, it would impact the sound that would be presented through the tube, as well as affecting the light that would be produced. So it's just a really interesting sort of machine. Now, the pyrophone is unique because it's an internal combustion sort of instrument, and it's a lot different from external combustion instruments like the calliope or the steam organ. These have the process of combustion happening 
outside of the device. But the Pyrophone is one of the only instruments ever created that actually has an internal combustion. And that allows control of basically each of the resonant chambers or each of the glass tubes, which produces a wider variety of these unique sounds when compared to different external combustion instruments. So the development of this pyrophone was a long process. It took over 100 years for different scientists and inventors to actually perfect this device. And when I heard it was a light show, I wasn't very convinced of how interesting that would be until I actually looked at videos of people playing the pyrophone. And it is amazing. It is all inspiring to watch this thing being played and the actual light show is really just you know balls of fire that appear to be shooting out of these glass tubes and i've read online at least in the current narrative they say they used to add different salts to these tubes so the actual light the fire that would be produced would be in different colors so it would be a true proper light show and when i present inventions or creations or discoveries like this i always like to present the current narrative and this is not because I foolhardily stand behind it, but because I want to show you what the history books have to say about these inventions. Now, according to the current narrative, it was Byron Higgins who accidentally discovered that burning gas within a glass tube would produce sound. And it said that he did this in the 1770s. Then another 30 years passed and by 1818, it says Faraday discovered that this was due to a rapid and mini explosion that was occurring within the tube. So a few years after that, a man by the name of Tyndall discovered that the sound could actually be changed and managed by adjusting the length of the tube. And finally, this leads to George's Frederick Eugene Kastner, who invented and created the pyrophone fire organ in 1873 so that is what the current narrative has to say about the development of this fire powered organ but i just wanted to show that information to you because we get into a lot of different things about this pyrophone while i had never heard about it before and i didn't realize that it was very popular there are some things written about it that i found very interesting one of those being is that the pyrophone was typically fueled by propane but they actually had gasoline powered mobile units and these could actually be attached to automobiles and could be played using the car basically and they also say that hydrogen pyrophones were also created so essentially you have the idea that you could have a mobile pyrophone or a mobile fire organ that you could take with you and basically hook it up to any automobile and have yourself a merry little time. Essentially, they're saying, at least according to this current narrative, that these pyrophones were created to be attached to the earliest versions of the car. And I found that to be vastly remarkable and I can't really picture that. So if there's anyone out there that can find the pyrophone or the fire organ or an example of it being played through an old car or using the instruments, the fuel, different things like that from the old car as it's written in the narrative, I would really appreciate you providing some links because that would be amazing. I couldn't find anything on it, but I just wanted to end this video with that idea and the whole idea that we have these inventions that come from these world's fairs or are presented at these world's fairs are founded before these world's fairs and then they're put on display for us to basically inherit and use as our own so in conclusion i just wanted to share this invention with you the pyrophone is really crazy to me it's quite the invention it's something that seems to pop out from a whole different timeline that doesn't really make a lot of sense in ours 
but this apparently was a real instrument that was really used by a lot of people. And I highly recommend you check out the links down below. I'm gonna put a link to a video of one of the first songs that was written and being played on a pyrophone. And you can hear how it sounds like a very ominous and faint tone. It's like a very distant human almost is what this device sounds like when it's being played. But it's better for you to listen to it than to hear me describe it. So check out the links down below. And I also want to point out how amazing those statues are and how interesting it is that while a lot of the World's Fair buildings were torn down, we do still have a lot of these statues from the 1878 World's Fair in Paris that are still all around Paris and in museums all around the world. So just another fun fact I wanted to share with you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments down below as well. And I will see you very soon on the next one.